I'm going to slow things down a little bit from nanotechnology and uh, <laughs> roll things back to the uh, railway industry. And since, uh, from what I've read, uh, dematerializing and rematerializing atoms and uh, floating them uh, is it, not going to happen any time within the next 200 years, maybe that will uh, speed up the process, but I think we're going to be living with railroads for uh, the next 100 years or so as a means of transporting both freight as well as passengers. So in light of that, and, and most of us in the room, um, I think our concerns ought to be uh, uh, directed that way when we're thinking about the railway industry. One of the concerns, though, that, um, uh, or, or one of the more enlightening spots uh, the way that uh, I view uh, technology today, particularly in the railway industry, it goes back to two weeks ago when I was at the Environmental Law and Policy Center dinner. It was sponsored by Talgo, uh, who's the uh, uh, manufacturer of uh, Spanish rail cars and also electrification uh, uh, rolling stock. And they just won a, a fairly significant order of $47 million from the state of Wisconsin uh, for passenger cars uh, on the Hiawatha line uh, via operator of Amtrak. And last year they uh, unveiled plans for Avrel, uh, which is again electrification uh, 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 passenger transport uh, train which uh, will move at uh, 236 miles uh, per hour. So. One of the things that uh, uh, really caught my attention was Antonio Perez, who I know very well. Uh, he's president and CEO of Talgo out of Seattle, Washington. Uh, he started telling the story about uh, Talgo's history. And the history uh, really highlighted the company's long relationship with the United States. Uh, to the point that uh, in 1949, when the family was just starting the company, um, they were coming out of uh, World War II. And the recognition was that uh, Europe in particular, uh, emerging from the war, was far behind in technology. And interestingly enough, Talgo came to Chicago to have its first train built. But he also made a comment uh, shortly thereafter that said uh, something in fact that things have changed. And since 1994, we, Talgo, have been working all over the U.S. bringing our Spanish high-speed uh, streamlined rail technology to American cities. It's about 45 years later, as I recall. What's really striking about that is the remarkable role reversal. I mean, we were the uh, leaders in that technology. The Europeans coming to us. Striking reversal. So, if we think Russian, we're in reverse. Uh, that's, that's sort of a downer, I think. Uh, uh, doesn't uh, portend well for the future, but it does portend well for the future if we think of it in reverse. What's the opportunity? Because there is opportunity, a great opportunity. Number one, we have a renewed interest in this country in rail. <clears throat> that's both high speed and freight. The question is, with that uh, direction, particularly from the federal level to the state level and the local level, the question is what are we going to do with that uh, opportunity to both enhance the well-being of our people, i.e. through emissions reduction and a cleaner environment, but also the health of our uh, U.S. economy. And for those of us in Illinois, I think the, uh, the question is even more pertinent. You know, we stand at the crossroads of uh, the nation's rail system right here in Chicago. And we also potentially 
sit at the epicenter of what could be a U.S. based green rail manufacturing industry, not just for Illinois, but for the nation. What really said, or what it really says in a nutshell, is that we have that opportunity in front of us, and the rest of it is really up to us to work collectively, both at a um, um, public level and a private level, a blended level, uh, to move forward. But we do have to work together to make that happen. Here's a picture of the past. Uh, just so we understand, the steam locomotive dates uh, back into the uh, 1850s, thereabouts, and it drew all the way up through uh, the late 40s until there was a transition to what was called diesel electric. And that occurred in the um, uh, late 40s and the early 50s. In fact, uh, American uh, Locomotive Company one which National Railway has uh, uh, since purchased, but uh, a dwarf of what it was uh, back when it was competing with Baldwin Locomotive in the United States for steam. The transition that happened with diesel electric, though, and that's a very good uh, analogy of what happened uh, uh, to us in the rail industry and, and the Talgo analogy, is the fact that uh, Baldwin's uh, uh, directors didn't believe diesel electric would be the future. And so stayed with steam until the company was literally bankrupt. Uh, Alco was um, um, moved forward, but through a series of uh, shuffling of paper and trying to strip assets, uh, it also went down other than its proprietary technology for existing parts, uh, supplies, etc. Uh, which is where uh, we kind of resurrected it because there's still a, a pretty good population of Alco locomotives in the country of India and still to some extent here in uh, North America and South America. But what we think of when we look at uh, the steam locomotive is that this is the kind of the tradition of what uh, people thought about. I mean, always the billowing smoke and always the loud whistles. And that's the image of the rail industry of the past. But a National Railway Equipment Company, through a very, um, you know, a lot of energy, a lot of effort, and um, a lot of risk, we're doing away with that uh, antiquated, loud, dirty, and uh, destructive uh, locomotive that uh, uh, has cancer-causing smog. And uh, we're replacing it now with what's called the Envirotive. The Envirotive is an ultra-low emitting, low noise, high fuel efficiency uh, engine. It was developed in uh, conjunction with the state of California to uh, uh, address a problem um, in the LA Basin, which was uh, extreme uh, high levels of uh, nitrous oxides and PM. 